Hey everyone, welcome to Avid Max Fly Tying Tuesdays. I'm Brady Lair here with you again, and today we're gonna tie a Magic Quildagon. So this is a cool little kind of modern fly with uh, a synthetic quill to give that nice segmentation look that you might be getting from Polish quills or, or another natural product. This is a nice uh, synthetic option provided. So to start out, we're gonna do a jigged version today. This is on the MFC 7220. It's a 60 degree 2X heavy jig hook. So it's a nice stout option for your Euro flies. Have our gold bead fixed it on it. This is a size 16 and we're matching up a 2.8 millimeter bead today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start a little bit of lead wire on this. I'm using a thin gauged lead wire. This is the 010. And I like that because I can put down quite a few thread wraps and sort of sneak it up and in towards the bead so it doesn't bulk up my fly too dramatically. So you can do eight to 10. If you want to go real heavy, you can sneak a few more in there. But I like to snug it on into that bead and out of the way it helps to create a natural transition of this fly overall. Thread I'm going to be using on this is a UTC. This is the 70 to near tan. It's like a nice natural underbody thread. These magic quills we're going to be using are a dark edge version of the magic quill and it's got a clear section to it as well. So whatever your thread is gonna be your base body color for these patterns. And I found that lighter colors tend to offer a better contrast when using the dark edge than a, a darker color thread might. So now we're positioned to tie our tail in and for that I'm gonna use a little Coque de Leon and this is just the uh, dark Pardo option from Whiting Farms. We'll grab a little bundle, strip those off of the feather here, and try and keep them aligned as best we can. If you have to stack them, you can stack them. I don't tend to worry too much about that with my tails. Just trying to keep them somewhat aligned. And we'll measure our length of our body, and we'll use that for our length of our tail transferred back. Throw down a couple of wraps, make sure it's in the right place and put some locking ones in real quick. And then we'll work on up and I like to use that tail material to help create that transition up onto the lead. So we'll walk on forward right up to that lead and then we can sneak up on top as well. Help secure everything in place. Do a wrap in front and then we can clip out that excess material. And now it's all about building the right profile here. So I'll walk down and back a couple times, simply working on that and focused on that transition right here where that lead begins, softening that and creating that profile. Doesn't have to be perfect just yet because we're gonna tie in another material and we'll have more chances to kind of smooth that out. So we'll get ready to do that. And this is the Magic Quill. So it comes on a, a nice card here. Uh, you peel them off and they are tapered down. I found that you can use one on multiple patterns, but they taper so dramatically that you almost wanna use the thinner half on your smaller flies and then save that back half for some of your larger flies. And you could just trim the, the card right in half is a suggestion that I got from Max. Another one of our tires is just clip that right in half and then you'd have some for size 16s and then maybe some for size 14s or bigger and that kind of thing. So once you have it peeled off, you do have a sticky side to this. So I'm gonna tie it in with the sticky side facing outward so that when I wrap it down, it'll be connected to the thread. It'll actually be tied to not facing downward at that point, inverted. So I'm gonna secure it right on the side here, and then we'll walk right on back up. And again, this is the other chance that you have to just work on that profile, that taper, and that transition to the bug. From there, nice and easy, we'll just half hitch this off. 
and we can bring that magic quill on forward. And now from here, we're gonna do touching wraps. So again, we're gonna kind of fold it over so that the sticky side goes down. And we're just gonna do some touching wraps on forward, creating that segmentation. If anybody's worked with quills and biots, know that it can be somewhat frustrating. A lot of times you need a little bit of extra prep work to make them nice and supple and moist. These magic quills, easy, quick, and really give a nice look, kind of an elegant look without all of that extra work. So once we've gone on up to the front, you can see I still have quite a bit of this magic quill left, a little bit wider gapped. We can use that on a slightly larger fly if we're good about saving our excess. So I'm gonna capture that up right behind the bead, just like so. And then we'll get into more of what are kind of the paragon aspects of this jigdagon in regards to finishing the fly off. So we'll whip finish from here because we're done with our thread. Just a few turns there, getting everything locked in place. And then we'll come back in. Traditionally, this is a nail polish that people have used, but there's such good products coming out of the fly tying world these days that go ahead and use our UV black and I'm gonna create a hot spot on this one and add a little bit of UV orange as well. Key to these Loon UV colors is making sure that you shake them up really good, dilute them out. I'll even get a piece of paper towel out or a cloth or something and dab out a little bit. You can see that first bit that's kind of coming out is a little more translucent and not as rich of a color as you want. We want that nice bright orange color that we're seeing here now and we can use that on our fly. So for this, since it's a jig and we, in theory, it's gonna be riding up like that. I'm gonna actually put my hot spot on the bottom. Get my UV light ready for this. Cause you only need a very small amount right on top here. So we'll just get a bubble coming out, dab a little bit on, pop that bubble and give it a quick cure. Make sure it hardens real nice, cures pretty fast. This is uh, Loon UV clear fly finish. And then we'll flip her over and repeat the process on the bottom with a little bit of black. This is kind of the backing of this pattern. Same thing, make sure I'm ready with my UV light. Get a nice dab out and work that right onto the bottom here. Hit it nice and quick. And start small. You can always start small with these, add a little bit more. I think I'm gonna come back and add just a little more black, kind of transition it down onto the body. This Loon stuff is a great improvement over the last generation they had. The old stuff would chip off real easy, which made it easy for tying if you added too much. But then it's coming off when you're fishing it too. I found their new formula is a lot better at uh, adhering to your fly. So you do have to be a little more cautious on the front end. But that Loon UV stuff, the way that it cures, just makes tying a bunch of these a lot simpler than using a nail polish or a a hard head lacquer type finish. And you get an awesome looking little quilt -a -gon that's gonna fish great. It's got that attractant hot spot. It's got the dark spot for your backing and then some great segmentation from that magic quill.